I'm uh, you're rolling, baby. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Hope this finds you doing well. Uh, my name is Don Line from Hope Palm Springs Luther Church. Hope you enjoy the service. And it's coming up next on ritual worship. Goodbye. Okay. Thanks, Don, for that intro to today's video. You know, Don is one of the beautiful folks of our faith community. He's a gift in many ways, especially in the way that he leads our spirit walk hikes, which will begin again in the fall. Well, Don recently busted his foot, and so it's good to see him out on the golf course embracing life once again. Stay for the end of the video and you'll get to see his tee off shot. Well, I'm Tim, pastor developer of Hope Palm Springs, and I too want to welcome you to this week's video. In today's uh, Bible reading, Jesus shares several little parables that intend to open us up to new discoveries that bring much joy and make life full. Really? Can we embrace life even as it is in the midst of a pandemic, not to mention other issues that we have going on as well? Jesus says, yes, we can. For the kingdom of God is all around us. So take a moment and center yourself in the presence of God's spirit there with you, wherever you may be. And remember that you are loved and nothing, not even a pandemic, has the power to change that. Welcome to virtual worship. Hey, Ed. Hey, Tommy. Ready for the Bible study? Yeah. Did you do the homework for the Bible study? Yes. So, Tommy, look at me. Uh -huh. You answered all the questions for Romans 8, 38, and 39. Yes. Tommy. Mostly. Mostly. Well, the answer to the last question is not in the Bible. The answer to the last question, what can separate you from the love of God? It's in there. It's not in there. Yes, it is. It's not in there. It's in there. It's in there. No, it's not. I would not give you questions. It's not in there. No, it's not. No, it's not. Show me, Bible boy. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are your ears open? Because here it is. Are you ready? Can you handle this? Can you handle this? I think I deserve it. I don't think you can handle it. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Get ready. Here it is. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither high nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, it doesn't say. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. It says nothing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah you proved me right. No, you proved me right. Wait, what? Yeah, the something that you're looking for is nothing. Huh? Something is nothing. No, something is something. Something is nothing. No, nothing is nothing. Nothing is something. No, nothing is nothing and something is something, but something can't be nothing and nothing can't be something. But in here it is and it can. <laughs> <laughs> so you just want me to go in there and say nothing. Yes. Just be like nothing. Exactly. <laughs> and the specific nothing mm -hmm. is neither and nor. Oh. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. Neither nor. Nothing. <laughs> yes. Nothing, neither nor. Nothing, nor neither, nothing, neither, nothing, nor. <laughs> so I'll just go in there and not say anything. No, I want you to say something. <sighs> then what is that something? Nothing. I want to hit you. What? Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Nothing. Right. Nothing. 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 Nothing? Nothing. Yeah, but you don't know my nothing. Doesn't matter what your nothing is. No. No, your nothing is nothing. My nothing is something. I've got a past. Just last night. Doesn't matter what you did last night or what you did five years ago. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Nothing.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasures hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. The Gospel of the Lord. And then also reading from Romans chapter 8. St. Paul writes, What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will not he with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends the reading. Let's revisit this year so far. COVID-19, the killing of George Floyd, widespread protests demanding for racial justice, continuing protests with federal intervention, a record-breaking economy, followed by a rapid self-imposed shutdown, widespread job loss, backlogged medical procedures, death of civil rights icon John Lewis, swarming locusts on the African continent, democracy under threat in Hong Kong, an ongoing crisis in Syria, brush fires in Australia. Okay, I'll stop. If you're still listening after that dose of reality, I think we can all say without risk of overstatement that 2020 has been one hell of a year so far. And I understand it is the job of the preacher to not only validate human experience in a world that lately has overwhelmed us, but to draw attention to the words of Scripture that tell us within the experience of these days is something valuable, something hopeful, something graceful. In other words, to point to not only the tiny pinpoint of light at the end of the tunnel, but the light in the part of the tunnel we're in right now, because the tunnel seems a lot longer than any of us could ever have imagined. Well, today's Bible readings are exactly that. For the word of God is clear. God tends to show up most when times are tough, when life is hard, when the future looks bleak. You know, we often expect God to show up in some sort of spectacular manner, like the cavalry coming over the hill after the bugle signals, help us on the way, or like a knight in shining armor that sweeps us off our feet and says, let me take you away from all this to a place that is lovely and serene only to live happily ever. Well, you know. 
Well, in my faith experience, seldom if ever does it happen like that, but I do believe when God shows up, God always shows up as a gift giver. Gifts that appear in unusual and easily dismissible ways, like in the treasure buried in the field, or the yeast folded into the dough, or it says in the, as it says in the book of Romans, in our weaknesses, in trouble, in hardship, and of course, in the death of Christ, given up for us all. In these unusual places, we discover a generous, gift-giving God. It can be shocking to read in the Bible about gifts while living in this recent age of difficulty. For all of creation, that is climate change, is groaning under the crushing weight of human brokenness, mismanagement, neglect, and indifference, in that the groaning of creation echoes the groaning of society. And here is the bad news. There's no such thing as a perfect denial system. Every denial system eventually fails. And lately, it seems we're so exposed, we become so exposed to life's harshness, leaving us vulnerable and defenseless. We've had no choice but to confront society's demons that before we could pretend didn't exist. And this is what we mean by the new normal and why we can never go back to the way things were. For once a denial system falls apart and raw truth is exposed, the old way is forever destroyed. Once you stop believing in Santa Claus, you can never believe in him again. So the roar of the lion can no longer be muffled by the din of denial. For one generation has passed on to the next unsolved problems and issues, whether it be biological warfare as found in a virus or a systemic racism that has permeated the very DNA of our society or a planet that has become a ticking time bomb. Oh sure, we, we can calm things down. We can try to return to the way things used to be, but we know we're only kidding ourselves, only hiding truths that have become self-evident. We can bury the radiation beneath the surface, even plant flowers on top of that surface on the ground where that radiation is buried and make it all look nice, but the radiation beneath the surface will continue to do its damage. In the Lord's Prayer, we prayed all those Sundays when we gathered at Temple Isaiah, we said to God, your kingdom come. Well, here it is. The kingdom of heaven is right here, right now, and it's a kingdom that comes in the darkness, and it often comes unnoticed and unappreciated. For in this field of sorrows, God's kingdom is present and awaiting joyful discovery, which is exactly what the parables in Matthew's gospel are all about. You know, one of those parables tells of a young man who went to work one day just like any other. His job was plowing stony land for little pay. Well, while guiding the plow through the field, he felt the blade strike a solid object. No surprise, for often his plow would run into large rocks that needed to be dug up and removed. But this time, it was no rock. To his surprise, it was buried treasure. Or like the merchant, browsing around the marketplace, looking for fine pearls. He'd buy them at cost, and then he'd sell them, marked up to others, bringing himself a profit. But not this time. This time he found the quintessential pearl, the one he could never resell. The one pearl he'd been searching for his entire life, it would become his prized possession. And for that, he, like the man who bought the field with the buried treasure, sells everything he has and buys that pearl. Or the one about the mustard seed, proving that size really doesn't matter. The mustard seed, the smallest of all seed, grows into a bush over 10 feet tall, where the birds of the air find sanctuary in the shade of its branches. Ironically, later in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus says even faith the size of that tiny seed can move mountains. And the parable where Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven to yeast, when yeast is added to flour, it causes the flour to rise. Yeast is a key ingredient because without it, bread can't be fluffy and light. 
In other words, the kingdom of heaven is transformative and it's uplifting. And without the yeast of God's presence, life like bread would be flat and dull. But with it, we are transformed to rise above life's circumstance. All of these are signs that point to the presence of God's kingdom among us. Signs that we stumble upon are surprised by, like buried treasure and pearls in the marketplace, even the insignificant and the tiny things like yeast and mustard seeds that in the end make all the difference. COVID-19 has shown us how something so small that is invisible to the eye can grow rapidly and exponentially into a destructive force that consumes all our attention and resources as individuals, communities, nations, and as a world. Offered in today's gospel reading is a clear counter image to this destructive force. The parables describe how we, how as we live in this kingdom of God, strength and hope emerge from something almost invisible or hidden like buried treasure or a single pearl somewhere in a vast market or even yeast in dough or tiny mustard seeds that grow exponentially. All gifts of God worthy of our attention and resources. You see, the kingdom of God doesn't close us off to the world. It opens us up to it. It would be easy to become skeptical, to give in to despair, to allow life's struggles to lock us behind doors of discouragement. But faith doesn't shut us in. It sends us out. We go into the field we venture into the marketplace, we plant seeds, we bake bread, because who knows, we might just discover buried treasure or the pearl we've been looking for all our lives. We might be surprised at what planting a few tiny seeds can do or even just how much bread we can produce. Simple, seemingly insignificant things that are the gifts of God that transform us and fill us with life. For God has placed buried treasure in our lives and pearls of great price in our days, there to discover if we have eyes to see and hearts that are open to this kingdom of God that is present among us. And in the tiny God is also placed a gift, little things that if we notice them, have the power to transform our lives. So embrace the now of all this. Do not be afraid. Life has not been placed on hold. Ministry has not been placed on hold. Live fully, live boldly with courage and strength. The life of faith is still the life of adventure. And then let me add one more thing. The words of Romans chapter 8 are the very reason why we as God's people can embrace even a world that is troubled and sometimes scary. Because we are forever and always held in the security of God's love. For as Romans 8 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or pandemic or nakedness, or danger, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the security of that love, we embrace the now. For the gifts of God are all around us, showing up in the most unlikely of ways, in the most unusual of places. Go for it. Discover the joy of God's kingdom. Amen. Amen.